ready. Are you packed? Not really. I'm mm. unpacked. I, I, <laughs> He's unpacked from Boston and getting ready to get packed to go to Tahoe. Yeah. It's crazy. Like the whole upstairs is littered with suitcases and clothing. And, um, you know, I, I can only imagine what you're thinking, like what has to come together in the next two days. Yeah. I'm organizing like a madman. I have lists and piles of things and, and stuff, just lots of stuff everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> And the dogs keep rolling in his clothes. Yeah, no. that's good. Better than piles. <laughs> Man. No, but I mean, just think about it this way. Whatever you don't bring and don't remember, you can always get it there. And chances are you're going to, you know, have too much stuff once you move. Because uh, you're trying to fit it into Morgan's apartment and stuff. So anyway, you'll be fine. Yeah, that was a big point of the list is just because I kind of want to bring as few things as possible. And so instead of just like putting a bunch of stuff in a bunch of suitcases and going, I can list out like everything that I need. And if I don't need it, I'm not going to put it on there. That's the same reason you need a list to go shopping. Cause otherwise you're <laughs> thinking, well, do we need this? What that do we need in true. this aisle? But if you think about just what you need, make a good list, then you're set to go. Did I ever tell you about how tack packed my buddy tack? No. no. So he had this plan when he would pack to go across like con- the country or to move to a new, new, um, city in general so he was in atlanta no he was in i don't know i think oregon moving (laughs) to hawaii and the way he would pack is he would take a legal pad and go out into his yard and write down everything that he owned and then if he went back inside and if it wasn't on the list he couldn't bring it so he'd spend a good (laughs) like couple hours thinking about everything that he had that belonged to him and if it wasn't on the list then he wouldn't bring it because obviously it wasn't that important that's commitment. And I asked him, I was like, did that ever, like, was that difficult? And he's like, oh, yeah. There was a lot of times where I was like, gosh, I really want to bring that, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's not no. my packing method. No, me neither. Me neither. I, I get whatever fits in my suitcase and then another suitcase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then props and toys and Frisbees and whatever else. So how are you doing with your phone, Maggie? Is that working out? Stop. I woke up this morning and my phone, every time I tried to open it, it would just go to a black screen and then like randomly shut itself off. Um, Which like some people could say, oh, you're addicted to your phone. You're fine. However, (laughs) my job is on my phone. (laughs) Like I I, I have a call today at 2.30 with a company and I, I am like, working on the final stages of an ad that I'm working with a brand on. And sure, maybe I'm a little addicted to my phone. I'm working on that. I think I'm improving on that. (laughs) Aren't we Uh, all? We're filming a podcast right now that we've never had to do through my computer. So it was just, it was a little bit of a stressful thing. Um, But we're rolling with it, though. And speaking of rolling with it. (laughs) Let's go ahead and get started. That way we can roll the intro music and then we can finish the rest of your story. Does that sound good? Go for it. Roll the music. Mags and Dads, wholesome chaos. Mags and Dads, wholesome chaos. So on your phone, you have all your photos, all your videos, all your drafts in TikTok, all your communications. Well, here's the crazy thing, Dad. You know how, I think I even said this on the podcast a little while ago, my stand against iCloud storage. Yes. <laughs> because I don't pay for iCloud storage because I think it's crazy. Like, I just 99 cents a month is like a, re- for like the rest of my life is a big commitment for me. Um, and so 99 ago, cents? Yeah. I pay a lot more than that. I pay like 10 <laughs> bucks a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depending on the amount of storage you get. But, you know, I, I made yeah. that whole thing where I was like, it's a slippery I'm, slope. I'm no longer going to pay for this. I'm just going to keep less photos on my phone. Well, now that's really biting me in the butt because my my phone, everything may be gone. Which would be. Yeah, dude. Sad. I mean, it's a business expense. It's just part of who you are and what you do. I and know, but I'm like a stickler it. on the little things. Like, it doesn't make sense that I, I get so cheap about certain things. And like, this is one of yeah. them. 
Uh, but yeah, well, I, I may learned. be considering that. It, hopefully you're going to get all the data back. Like you got your yeah. phone to start again, right? Uh, yeah, briefly. Okay. I, I got it to and open And you have an it. Apple... Um, Genius appointment. You got a, yeah, an appointment yeah. at Apple at the yeah. Genius Bar. But Good. I don't think I can use my phone for directions. So it's really going to test my sense of direction. Um, <laughs> so I'll let you know how that goes on next week's podcast. That could be good practice. For what? For future situations oh. where you have to navigate using a map. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to hey, use a map. Um, <laughs> you're not? No. You're speaking of other things that you could you could use your phone for. Um, Calm is one of the best sponsors. We love Calm. In fact, before this, this podcast today, we turned off the lights in the studio and we did kind of a group meditation, Jeff Warren's meditations on Calm. It was fantastic. And we all just kind of got in the right mindset. That's, of course, before we realized uh, that your phone wasn't working and you were going through all this chaos on your end. So we maybe got a little uncalm. But the point is, you know, who's responsible for your mental health and well-being? Ultimately, you are. It's like this journey that you're on your entire lifetime to try to prepare and understand how you're going to handle the, the bumps in the road and the technology glitches and the people in your life who maybe make you a little agitated from time to time. It's not about them. It's about you and your ability to process your environment, manage your own thinking, and take charge of your mental health. And that's why we're partnering with Calm. We're partnering with Calm, the number one mental wellness app, to give you the tools that improve the way you feel. Reduce stress and anxiety through guided meditations, improve focus with curated music tracks, and rest and recharge with Calm's imaginative sleep stories for children and adults. There's even new daily movement sessions designed to relax your body and uplift your mind. If you go to calm.com slash chaos, you'll get a special offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription and new content is added every week. Over 100 million people around the world use Calm to take care of their minds. Calm is ready to help you stress less, sleep more, and live a happier, healthier life. For listeners of this show, Wholesome Chaos, Calm is offering an exclusive offer for 40% off a Calm premium subscription, which is what I have at calm.com slash chaos. Go to calm.com slash chaos for 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library. That's calm.com slash chaos. Speaking of technology, we've been doing something really fun around our house. Eddie finally invested in VR. Oh, yeah. That's fun. I've been waiting to talk about this. Yeah. I'll bet you have. I mean, it is really fun. And you know how he loves gaming generally, has been streaming, has been experimenting with PlayStation stuff. And so you bought like the PlayStation version. Is that right? Yeah. PlayStation VR. PlayStation VR. Yeah. And and we thought you'd bought a PS5, but it we think it kind of got stolen. Right. Yeah. That's that's. Actually, why I got the PSVR is because um, I got a PS5. We were able to get in on the restocks, and I was super excited. So um, I placed the order, and you know it was coming this way. I actually got here 10 days early, apparently. Um, but yeah. it got here while we were in L.A. So um, Wait, and you never got it? We put a vacation it? hold on it. No, it, it, ever since that day, it just said, like, status unknown or status, like, <laughs> Waiting yeah. to be updated. Delivery yeah. status or uh, yeah, estimated delivery date unknown. Yep, it never it Someday. never went anywhere after we put the vacation hold because we weren't here to get it, and uh, and we couldn't get information. So he bought it through Walmart, <laughs> yeah. who was who shipped it through FedEx, but FedEx didn't see us as like the end customer. They saw Walmart as the customer. And so we couldn't talk to FedEx and get information from them because they had to talk to Walmart. I mean, they spent hours on the phone. But ultimately, we think what happened is it got stolen because these things are so hard to get. And they have been since they were released oh, yeah. over a year ago, right? Oh, Wait, yeah, so over a year did you now. get a refund? Yeah, we got a refund because all okay. Walmart could do was in order to put a trace on it, they had to cancel it. But the last person I talked to at customer support at Walmart didn't say he was going to put a trace on it. He's like, oh, but you don't have to worry. You're getting a refund. I'm like, yes, I want my refund, but I want a trace on it because I want to know where that is. I want yeah. I want the FedEx to be responsible we want for justice. the package that they have sitting there. 
Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. We want punishment. Because then definitely somebody's going to walk off with it. It's like, oh, they never asked about it. But it's cool. It's mine now. So hey, you never know. So in Eddie went out and bought a VR. He's like, he's like, all right, I'm still going to get something cool today. And so we, we were doing Iron Man. Mom and I were flying around. I posted a silly TikTok of us trying it <laughs> yeah. out. But then the other day, I got into, what is it, No Man's Sky? Skyrim. Oh, Skyrim. Yeah. <laughs> And that <laughs> that's right, guys, if those the Skyrim fans out there know, yeah, I bought it a fourth time. If you know, you know, I, yeah, if you know, you know, but it was worth it and it was on sale. So so your previous version of Skyrim doesn't work in VR. You had to buy a different nope. version. Yeah, I, I have one for the Xbox 360, PS4, <laughs> Nintendo Switch and now PlayStation VR because they don't have a free add-on for some reason. Not cool, Skyrim. Yeah. You've sold the game so many times. <laughs> I just, oh, my God. So, yeah. You know, I've always been sort of, like, averse to gaming. I, I Well, I mean, I like it, and, and I really enjoy watching Eddie, but sitting down for hours and hours, and plus feeling completely uncoordinated with, like, what to do with my <laughs> yeah. fingers and thumbs and buttons, and there's, you know, which buttons do what, and there's all these, like, combinations if you push, push like, two at once and then lift up on this thing and pull yeah, the bottom switch. Yeah, you didn't switch. even like it like, when we played Among Us. Oh, true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> During quarantine, Eddie and I were like, you know what will be so fun? All four of us, let's just play Among Us. And it, it didn't go over that well. No. It's, well, I still have it on my phone, so we can try again. Well, generally speaking, I prefer RR, you know, to VR. RR? Real reality. The VR is so funny because it's like... It's yeah. like a drunk person. You're trying to, you're trying to, <laughs> I was trying to land, you know, I'm Iron Man and I'm flying up in the air and I'm like coming down fast, but you, you just like, you're, you just feel drunk. You just. Mm. Maybe at first. Yeah. And then when I, when you get the hang of it though, and especially in Skyrim mm -hmm. with the controls, so you're holding these two paddles, Maggie, kind of like little, um, Joysticks. Yeah, they're called yeah. move sticks. Move sticks. <laughs> and they have buttons on the top and triggers on the bottom. But they also sense where your arms are going, and it gets to be super intuitive. Like if you're sword fighting with someone, you literally are sword fighting with them. Like your your thing becomes a sword, um, which to me is just like incredibly immersive. And the visuals are great, but you just get a sense playing VR like how good it's going to be. Yeah. Oh yeah, and PSVR is also like bottom shelf VR right now. I, I feel like once I bought it, I just went down this whole rabbit hole of like all the crazy awesome tech that's out there. Most of it is like you know thousands and thousands of yeah. dollars, but um, it's it was so worth it just to like dip our toes into that reality. And, yeah. And it's just so crazy. Like you can't really explain to someone who hasn't done vr like how immersive it is and how your brain like is just completely tricked into thinking you're somewhere else it's so bizarre eddie was yeah. it wasn't it ryan trahan 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 is that, i don't which which way is it hmm. the the youtuber who spent like 24 hours or like seven days in vr oh i i don't know i don't know the name i've seen some videos like that what yeah. happened to him? Is he okay? Yeah, no, he made a YouTube video of it. He's uh, he's actually married to my friend Haley. Um, but in, oh yeah, yeah, him. yeah, and she like shows up <laughs> yeah. in the videos, but she's like in the VR while he's like totally immersed in this um, for so long. How like, does he that's... eat? He and he... do other things if he's in VR. He just had the headset on. And just kept it. Yeah, I, I guess think people just bring him food <laughs> while he was eating. That's, yeah. That would actually be a really interesting experiment. It, it'll it do stuff to your brain. It'll literally change the way your brain functions. It's really weird. Yeah, your plasticity That's like, of your brain. Well, you were Fast telling me, like, even though you had so much um, enjoyment for playing video games on a controller, mm -hmm. suddenly, like, that's not as satisfying to you anymore. No, now, yeah, it's like, I don't want to be sitting on the couch using, wiggling my thumbs while looking at a TV screen. I'd rather be in the That's game. That's archaic. Exactly. It's Man. lazy. But it, yeah, I like, for the first week, I feel like my body had to get used to standing more than usual or just like standing while playing video games. And like my, um, muscles would be like kind of sore and now i like kind of feel just more fit in general which that's is good. great that's yeah. the good part <laughs> yeah 
So Maggie, tell me about you. You said you had a pretty interesting week. I did. This week was so busy. Um, the busyness started off with I went to two of my friends, um, Aiden Bissett and Claire Rosencrantz, have been touring together. Um, and I finally got to go to their, they had two shows in LA. I went to the first one. Uh, I went with a bunch of my friends, which was so fun because we like knew every word to all their songs and and we like started wow. mosh pits and stuff and we were just going crazy and it felt like oh my gosh like so fun but also so proud because we care about these yes. people so deeply and they're doing watching someone in their element doing what they love so well and with so much joy, just like filled me with joy. And I was like, this is just so cool. Like they're little rock stars and I love them. Um, they just finished their tour, but I'm sure they'll be touring again. Claire's playing at Lollapalooza, I think. Um, so oh, if, wow. if you haven't had a chance nice. to see them, you should do that and go see them any chance you can get. Um, Cause they're amazing. But that was an incredible experience. Um, and then what club what, was it at in LA? Or it was at the Roxy. Stage? It was at the Roxy. Oh, that's great. Yes. Yeah, something Aiden literally said on stage. He was like, the last time I was here, I was actually kicked out. So this is <laughs> like, this is really cool that now I'm playing the Roxy. That's a classic. Yeah. So, well, cool. It was so cool for them to be there. Um, and then I'm sure it yeah. meant a lot to them that you came out to support. You know what oh, I mean? Absolutely. And we had, <laughs> We had friends who like flew to other of their shows and like went the second night and everything just because it was so exciting. It was so cool. Um, but yeah, yesterday I did a beach cleanup with my friend Alyssa with we thought it was with free people, which it kind of was. But it was like free people with another organization. Um, and we mm -hmm. walked like two miles on that beach. You just kind of like divided yourselves up. It was pretty self-explanatory um and just like picked up trash and then we weighed the trash and it was like over 21 pounds of trash we had picked up which was kind of crazy for like the size of the pieces we were picking up but i did mm. notice as we were leaving every single time i saw a piece of trash on the ground my first instinct i was like i have to go pick that up i have to go pick it up and i have to go mm -hmm. weigh it which like i do normally not the weighing <laughs> part but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like I do normally pick up trash, but I have just been in that mode that now I'm like on the lookout for it, which in LA, if you're on the lookout, you're probably going to find it. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I played disc golf this week with John and Eric and mm -hmm. we were um, in a different course in Greenville. We hadn't been to before. And I ran across like this big bottle that, or this empty, like, Gatorade bottle or whatever, picked it up and just like put it in my bag or I was carrying it because it didn't really fit in my bag. And then, you know, thinking I'm going to look for a trash can, couldn't find a trash can. And eventually later in the course, I found this like this big site where there was like deconstructed like limb timbers from a, a building and like other trash. And it was like a big, huge trash pile like that already was existing. I guess somebody was going to clean it up later. So I just <laughs> threw my Gatorade bottle in the trash. Like, you know, it's already a work in progress. I might as well just add to this collection. But no, that's a much better solution. You pick yeah. it up and take it with you, right? It was, Dad, it was so funny because the beach cleanup was at Santa Monica. I don't think I've ever seen Santa Monica so clean, like by the time we yeah. got there. Like, you had to hunt for the trash. It was crazy. We were huh. like, why didn't we choose Venice? Like, <laughs> like so, it was really weird. Um, but no, that was the beginning of my day yesterday. And then... Well, that's came, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I came back home and I had a package, which was this dress that I bought, like, last week that I was so excited for. I had been showing my friends pictures of it online like since I bought it because I was so excited and it was here so obviously I put it on and then I get a knock at my door and it's Mitch because we're going to play pickleball so I just open the door and I'm fully in the dress <laughs> and I was, he, he like 
luckily he like knows me well enough to know that like that's not even weird <laughs> at yeah. this point good friends um, but yeah i was like look it's here he was like it's so cool um <laughs> and it was a really nice moment <laughs> um but yeah then i played pickleball with mitchell Alyssa, and bobby for hours we had so much fun good. yeah Alyssa, you guys are getting good like yeah. that whole squad you're pushing each other to a new level i could hardly keep up with you when i was there thank you, you hey mags you know what else is super convenient and comes in the mail and can what? actually help you clean up your skin in this what? case is <laughs> apostrophe <gasps> We've all had trouble and struggle with our skin from time to time in different ways. And that's why we are so excited to be partnering with Apostrophe, who's a sponsor for this episode. Apostrophe is a prescription skincare company that offers science-backed oral and topical medications that are clinically proven to help clear acne. Apostrophe connects you with board-certified dermatologists who will create a personalized treatment plan that is perfectly tailored to your unique skin. Simply fill out Apostrophe's online quiz about your skin goals and medical history, then snap a few selfies, and your dermatologist will create your customized treatment plan. Apostrophe treats all types of acne, from hormonal acne to facial acne, and even chest knee, back knee, and butt knee. They treat breakouts from head to toe. I remember, especially like late middle school, early high school, when I was starting to struggle with my skin more and acne, and my go-to thing was to ask all my friends with clear skin what they did. However, what I didn't realize at the time is everybody's skin is different. So something that works for somebody may yes. not work for you. And that is why apostrophe is amazing because it's literally dermatologists getting to know your skin to prescribe what will be best for you. And also it's not just acne because I also logged into apostrophe and went through their quiz and decided mm -hmm. that I might want to talk to a dermatologist about some of my wrinkle lines, you know, mm -hmm. the wrinkles around my eyes because I smile so much. And is there something that I can do to treat those and make those a little bit better? So it was super easy to fill that out and to upload some photographs. And I'm just standing by waiting to hear back from my dermatologist. We have a special deal for our audience. Save $15 off your first visit with an apostrophe provider at apostrophe.com slash chaos when you use our code chaos. This code is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash chaos and click begin visit and then use our code chaos and sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. That's A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E dot com slash chaos and use that code chaos to get your dermatologist crafted treatment plan for five dollars big thanks to apostrophe for sponsoring this podcast thank you apostrophe i had one more thing that i thought was so funny that i wanted to tell you about pickleball that i noticed um sure. when, when we showed up there were these people um filming this little commercial type thing. I don't know if it was specifically a commercial or more of a promotional video for this company that was tennis related. And so they, let me paint the picture for you. The, if the fence of the courts is here, I know you can't see me, but just imagine a fence. <laughs> and then on one side are the courts. Okay. On the other side, like right on the other side, were these picnic benches that they were sitting at recording. I'm with so you. So everything they were recording, we were in the background. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and and uh, this was during our first game, and we were playing so all over the place. And like our, our form <laughs> was not the best. We're also just like silly people. So we were doing weird things. And I just made the observation. I was like, I wonder how much of this is in their video. And if we're going to see this and one how day. much they're going to use. <laughs> yeah. And they're just like, who are these uh, four kids in the background hitting a ball like their life depends on it? <laughs> Um, That's I so thought that funny. was really funny. Yep. So we still have a lot to talk about on this podcast, as well as some questions from our wonderful listeners about life generally and how uh, we could help you with that. But since this is actually Eddie's last podcast in the studio for a period of time, I wanted to throw some extra love and focus on him and maybe share a couple stories that I've been thinking about 
in preparation. You mentioned, Maggie, like slam dancing or starting a mosh pit um, for your friend's show. I don't know if you were slam dancing. I don't know what slam dancing is. caused me to think is. about my wonderful experiences with Eddie at the masquerade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The first time we, we went to masquerade, I think you, you told me about like a friend of yours was in a band who was doing a set or something like that. Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah, it was this guy, Skyler, who was kind of, he was like, an older person that used to go to my high school. So like all of the older people, like all the seniors at my high school knew him. And so then that's how I got to know him and he was doing a show. Um, so yeah, we all, we went there. Yep. The masquerade, if for those of you listening is a performance venue in Atlanta, music venue. It used to be in a different location that was built in an old mill, um, where they made this product out of Excelsior. It was actually called Excelsior mill when I moved to Georgia and it was a pizza place with a huge pipe organ built into it, they showed movies in the basement. And me and my friends used to go to this place like forever. We had so many memories there, even after it became more of a music venue. And so it was cool to go there with Eddie. Remember when we we walked in and there were not that many people there. They were still trying to start that mosh pit. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the bands was Mothra, you remember? Yeah. And the guy oh, yeah. t- at one point takes off his shirt to get the crowd fired up and he had the logo of the band tattooed across his chest mothra yeah and, and we were <laughs> wow. like "Ooh, like that's that's quite a commitment but i don't know if i would have gone there and you might be regretting that later if the band breaks up yeah <laughs> man but the my favorite story was when dance gavin dance played mm-hmm. and you and i went and i was already by then probably late 40s maybe. Yeah. And, um, I had the experience of crowd surfing with my son (laughs) at a concert at the masquerade. Oh yeah. It was awesome. I remember. Yeah. That was so cool. And you even said to me, cause we both know the music and you're like, I think they're going to close with this song. And right when it gets to the part where blah, 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 you know, the beat drop Yeah. before the final chorus or whatever, I'm going to go up and I'm like, all right, I'll be right after you. (laughs) Yeah, we both surfed our way to the stage. It was so fun. Oh yeah, it was awesome. And yeah, I wanted to time it right. How do you how do you go about like crowd surfing? You just like tell everyone around you like pick me up. Yeah, all you do is just tap a couple people on the shoulder and then you point upwards and then they just grab you and throw you. It's like, it's pretty easy. There's Hmm. a huge etiquette to like when people are in the air. There's like responsibility of the people under them to make sure they don't get hurt, and so you kind of like pass each other around. I only remember one concert I went to where somebody did a stage dive and the crowd just kind of like cleared out and let him fall because he was a big dude. I think they were worried about him falling and hurting them. That's terrible. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah, that because like that could also just hurt everyone else depending on. I think stage stage dives are not a good idea because like you're just throwing yourself on top of a bunch of people. Like you're gonna hurt them. So (laughs) don't. They're so fun. Yeah. So any, uh, any stories coming to mind for you, Maggie? If I was, not, I have plenty more. I was going to ask, actually, <laughs> Eddie, what has been your least favorite edit job that you've had to do on the podcast? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> because of dad so and I many. stuttering <laughs> or, or maybe like ads we've messed up. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. I feel like I'd have to think it over. Yeah, yeah, really... but they're, they're definitely there. I know oh, there. I know the answer. It was the one where you were in North Carolina and we used a different software platform and it was canceling oh, yeah. out your audio. Yeah. We, like, we had this feedback loop that, that it canceled out part of your audio. Oh, oh no, it was, really? That was a big struggle. Yeah, oh, man. When yeah, you were on the movie set that's and you were so filming uh, The Other Zoe. We had yeah. the like uh echo or denoiser thing oh. turned on and so it was just like gotcha. yeah. was, so yeah. away at the audio so the problem was it was it was not only denoising like the bad sound but it was squashing the good sound and so it's just mm. we couldn't get a good sound out of the audio generally so yeah, next uh, honestly, time I th- yes i i think the biggest thing is actually just the file transfers like remotely um, mm. when we spent, cause we'll spend a lot of time where it's like, okay, you know, I'm uploading the podcast. So I made sure to give it like 24 hours or if you don't, then things are going to get hairy. 
um, which is another reason why audio uh, podcast is going to be amazing. Things are going to get hairy. Harry. No way that's Harry. a phrase. No way that's a phrase. That is totally yes. a phrase. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Like Harry Potter. Like a hairy situation. I'm gonna assume you're no, talking about like Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume we're talking <laughs> about Harry Potter. <laughs> oh wait, can I tell you Harry guys Potter something so funny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> guys, yesterday on the way to pickleball, we, Mitch and I were driving together. And it took us like 10 extra minutes because of the wrong turns we made. And the reason we made wrong turns is because we were playing Anyone by Justin Bieber while I was doing (laughs) Harry Potter impressions for like five straight minutes. And I was doing like the whole like, um, like, no, Ron, you can't. What? What is it? He's going to sacrifice himself. <laughs> yeah. Like, all those things. Ron, no. <laughs> and, like, at the top I I of my lungs. And, guys, literally, like, a few minutes in, I look over at Mitch and I'm like, have you seen Harry Potter? And he goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, what? what's wrong with him? And I was like, yeah, oh. Yeah, that's the thing. A lot of people haven't even gotten into the shows. Like, and that's hard to fathom because uh, we, yeah, we know we them so, so well. Yeah, because we were so in it. Yeah, but I told him I was like, we know has listened to him. No, not everyone. But I, I told him I was like, well, just know that I'm killing it right now. Just know I am (laughs) nailing it. You are, I'm sure. I thought that was so funny. So Maggie, to back up your question about Eddie's podcast editing, uh, Mm -hmm. I wanted to loop in this question from our listener, Aim. And AIM is a new fan or a big fan from Thailand, which we love Thailand. We've been there as a family to Bangkok, to Chiang Mai, and it was awesome. And, he, and AIM says, I'm now practicing my English skills through your show. I usually watch it every week on YouTube. Thank you for having such a great inspirational show. Thank you, AIM. And I wanted to take the occasion of your question to point out that on YouTube, we are, at least for the immediate time, not going to be releasing the full podcast episodes. We made an announcement about that last week. And the, and the reason being, we're going to show some excerpts and some, some other uh, behind the scenes things. So continue to subscribe and check it out. Um, oh, wait. We yeah, are still releasing the full episodes. Yeah. It's just without video. Without video. Yeah, we're going to release the full audio version on YouTube, but without the video. Thank you, Eddie. That's a good point. Um, However, and in addition, we will also continue to be on all podcast platforms. And the reason for that is with Eddie's move back to Lake Tahoe, with Shelia's writing and her projects, with my travel schedule and speaking, we want to make sure that everything we do for you guys, we do at the highest level. And so we really want to focus on the audio podcast at the moment um, until we have greater capacity to deal with uh, all the other aspects so just wanted to mention that thanks that was very unclear (laughs) (laughs) should should i clear it up you're good essentially there will be a audio version of the podcast on youtube but no longer a video version for a little bit right but there are supplemental videos or photos like there was last week oh never mind <laughs> Someone get that a script. So the other thing time. I was thinking about. Hope that clears everything up. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. We're figuring it out with you, my there, friends. There'll still be something on the YouTube channel. They'll yeah. We'll still be putting something so out. So subscribe there. on YouTube for sure. Subscribe on everything. Like As a literally. matter of fact, um, Instagram, Wholesome Chaos Podcast Instagram will be featuring photos from past podcasts and going forward. So definitely subscribe there and start looking out for that. Eddie, yep. um, one of the things I was really thinking about when I was in Orlando was the first time I brought you to Orlando with me by myself on a mm. solo father-son speaking trip. And you were, I think, four. You probably don't <laughs> you remember, remember this. But we went to the Gaylord I Floridian. I was going to say, yeah, did, did we go to the Gaylord? The Gaylord Floridian. And you remember the pool? I remember the lobby. The lobby? Yeah, the lobby is pretty epic. And the big pool, they have like this octopus slide creature that kind of goes into the pool there. And I remember that was a big highlight. But the idea was, I want to start traveling with my son. And Eddie had all these flights already. He was a very experienced traveler 
40 flights before he was two years old. Uh-huh. And I was like, I somehow convinced my wife to, to let me take my son, our son, out of town um, as a four-year-old while I already have all these other commitments of like working with my client. And there was like a kid's club at the hotel. I didn't realize like, yeah, it's not for four-year-olds. You have to be at mm. least like six or, oh. or eight or I don't know but what. he was but tall. Yeah, he was tall and smart. And talkative, but um, but no, but my, my my client was very cool with it. I brought you know they knew in advance that he was coming, and they were very accommodating. The other thing I really remember about that trip is when we were waiting to get picked up by Grandpa. After, after it was all done, you were so exhausted. I literally laid down my garment bag on the on the sidewalk outside huh. the car pickup, and you laid down on my garment bag and just went to sleep. Aww. Wow. And then, so he showed up and I literally put you in the back seat, buckled you in and it's like, then we can go home. So did you take a picture? No, I don't think so. If so, I have no idea where it is. (laughs) See, she's already thinking she wants to put that picture in the podcast. But yeah, I would share it. (laughs) (laughs) No, but since then we've been all around the world together. Uh, You and I, my friend. And so many different dates and adventures. Uh, same for you, Maggie. I love traveling with either one of you guys. It makes it all much more worthwhile. Did we ever talk about like Eddie's fantastic feathers? No. Ooh. Okay. Go ahead and lay it out. Lay it out there. Yeah. So back when I was a, uh, successful businessman, I decided (laughs) to start. Yeah. I was, I was really little. Um, and I decided, I don't even know if I feel like you guys might've given me the idea or been like, Hey, maybe you should uh, do this. But, um, I basically with like the help of my parents came up with like a booklet for, um, a peacock feather basically. So Uh, I use peacock feathers in my speeches to teach audiences about balance. And so they manipulate the feathers and, and so there's a cool kind of component that goes along with those. Yeah. So that's why the feathers were a big thing. And so it was kind of like an instruction booklet, a photo booklet that you did about how to use the feathers. And then you packed your, packaged your booklet with the feather. Yeah, with uh, some tricks and other like, you know, creative ways to do it. And sold it for? One dollar. One dollar. Eddie's Fabulous Feathers. And he had a, a travel case yep. with the feathers. We print it, the printouts. We punched mm-hmm. holes in them so you could slide them on the end of the peacock feathers. And you remember what happened? Was it in Michigan? Yeah, Michigan State. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Because, yeah, I really wanted a DS at the time. And we had done a couple, I think. But Michigan was where I hit it big. And <laughs> you know, every, everyone wanted to buy uh, a feather. And so I remember, like, counting up. You, you know, were so serious about it, too. You were, like, so... Business like in, yeah. in how you conducted yourself with people, and but but we got to teach him about you know profit margins, cost of goods sold. We didn't give you the feathers. I helped you buy them, but you right. you paid the twenty five yeah, cents that's right. back to me for each feather, and so your profit margin was seventy five cents on each sale, and you applied that money to buy your DS. Yeah, man, entrepreneurial <laughs> education right there. So. <laughs> yeah, you don't need college. You just start selling some feathers when you're. No, you decided you old. wanted to go to Michigan State, and I was like, every college he goes to, you're gonna change your mind. But that was the first yeah. one you went to, and you were like, yeah. And we went because we went to Notre Dame later, and I was like, I'm going here for sure. Yeah, and then he went and to High Point. I'm like, yeah. definitely going here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Maggie, Maggie too had multiple. I mean, the face painting was early, but it feels like. Seems like you had another job before that, too. I worked for you guys. Like, I I remember doing the, um, like, book bundles where I it would be, like, uh, Mm -hmm. an audio version of the book, the book, and then a DVD. And you package them up, and then you put them in the plastic, and then you use the really hot hair dryer type thing to, like... Shrink wrapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember doing stuff like that. Uh, where I would say like, I'll work for you guys for like two hours and, and then get this. But yeah, face painting was the first real thing, I believe. Yeah. Lucrative for sure. 
Speaking of parents and your financial decisions and your financial future, we are so excited to be partnering with a brand new sponsor for this podcast, Fabric Life Insurance. And Fabric is an incredible resource. We just learned a lot about today um, by going to the website and by talking with some of the people on the, on the amazing team. Um, and you know, as a parent, you're always thinking about your kid's future and how your family will grow and all the financial decisions. And when you become a parent, immediately you feel the weight of so much responsibility and uncertainty about the future. And you, what you know, like for sure, is that you've got to figure this out and you have to get your financial ducks in order. Well, that's where fabric comes in so much because as a parent, you know, if you are a parent, then you know for sure that your kids are amazing. And they're also expensive. But with Fabric, protecting your family with term life insurance is really surprisingly affordable. Um, and this, this company has really simplified how you can not only buy insurance for your family situation, but also look at other financial resources as this portal to save for college, to think about your will and your future. And it's a great way to get educated. Um, I mean, Shay and I were talking with them and we were, you were saying, I wish we had this, right? Oh, yeah, because I had to, to learn all of this stuff independently, find out information. and um, But yeah, one of the first things we did after our son was born was get uh, life insurance. We were like, wait a second, if something happens to us, we need to take care of this kid. So we immediately did the life insurance and then all these other things. So this portal to be able to go there and get your insurance there and all of your questions answered, it's just a really wonderful uh, tool, wonderful company. Fabric was built specifically for parents to help you manage your family's financial future like a parenting pro, stress-free. Fabric's new lower prices mean significant savings over the other providers, with great policies like a million dollars in coverage for less than a dollar a day. Everything is on your schedule with Fabric because it's all online, less than 10 minutes to apply, and you could be offered coverage instantly with no health exam required. Then just personalize your quote to fit your family's needs and you'll get be set up with high quality, affordable protection for your family. Fabric is fully backed by Vanis Life, one of the most trusted names in life insurance since 1847. So you can feel confident you're getting a high quality policy that meets your family's needs. With Fabric's online hub, it's quick and easy to track your family's finances all in one place. Get fast, affordable life insurance, create a will for your family, set up your kids' college savings plans, and even establish a rainy day savings fund. Planning for the future has never been easier. There's no risk to apply today. Fabric has a 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can cancel at any time. Protect your family with term life insurance now in just 10 minutes. Apply today at meetfabric.com slash chaos. That's meetfabric.com slash chaos to start protecting your family today. M-E-E-T fabric.com slash chaos. Fabric insurance agency policies issued by Vantis Life, not available in New York and Montana. Price is subject to underwriting and health questions. Thank you, Fabric, for sponsoring this episode. So Maggie, here's a comment that came in from a TikTok comment, and the question is how to ask for a raise at work, or more broadly, how to ask for what you want in life. Like, how do you go out there and ask for something that you really truly desire? I thought that was a good, like, open-ended question because it can be difficult, right? When you know what it is you want, or when you feel like you deserve a raise, or something special, or you're just looking for an opportunity. Like putting yourself out there, taking that risk can be sort of a challenge. Yeah, I really don't like asking for things. And I feel like I'm always surprised when I do ask for things and then you get it. <laughs> like, I think it's <laughs> I think it's crazy how many times when you ask for something, it actually pulls through, you know, ask and you shall receive. It's It's crazy. And I feel like part of it is I don't like asking for things. I don't like putting people in strange positions, but I also think I overthink sometimes <laughs> and that it's not actually mm. that deep and you can't ask for things. Yeah. It's about anticipating, anticipating the rejection and kind of playing that through as like the more likely scenario. And so you put yourself in this like defeated state of mind before you even like put yourself out there. But it's really just about having yeah. a sense of clarity. Like this is something that I desire and 
And you have to also know in your heart, like you have the right to ask for it. You deserve to be happier. Um, I would also say if it's something like a raise, you, you should also make that case. You should also be able to walk into a situation being able to demonstrate like I have provided value to you in all of these ways. But if you're employed somewhere and you're doing a great job, it's un more unlikely that they're going to be the one to reach out to you and say, hey, by the way, we'd like to pay you more money. That it's, it's up to you to assert some initiative and say, I think I deserve a, a higher level of responsibility and a higher salary here at this organization because of this, this, and this. And, and the best advice I could ever give you, and you probably have heard this in other places as well, is if you want to demonstrate value and make sure you always have a job, make yourself irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, like exactly. always look for ways that you can be providing value. Don't wait to be asked to do something. And that goes in your family too, right? Yeah. And specifically when I was 19 years old, um, I was working at a mortgage company and I uh, had my review, my six month review or whatever, and I didn't get a raise. Yet the job that I rolled into, I actually created two or three big systems that were used throughout the lending company. And I'm just, you know, a 19 year old kid, but I, I'm always, a, you know, looking for ways to improve things and, and be more productive and uh, a better, you know, do a better job. So I leave the, my boss's office and I was like, you know, that was just not right. And I went back in and I said, you know what? I, I kind of disagree with this review. Like, I, I feel like I've done so much more and yet I'm not getting a raise. And he said, well, you know, when we hired you, we hired you because we expect more from you. You know, we, we knew your capabilities. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. And he goes, oh, by the way, put yourself on the higher commission. So in the lending company, uh, at the end of each month, there was the lower commission, which was a, a small amount of a bonus. And then the higher one who went to the loan officers or some, you know, the highest group was triple that. So I actually, I didn't get a raise. <laughs> I got a bonus that actually one or two times was higher than my paycheck. So I mm. got way more than I even asked for. Wow. <laughs> but had I not walked back in there, if it, you know, and at 19, we, are, we typically will just go like, oh, I, I don't know what to say. They're a grown up, you know, whatever. But because I went back in there and I didn't get angry or whatever, I was just like, you know, look, I, I created these systems and all of this. And, and once he heard that, he's like, yeah, you're right. You definitely. And when I left that job, they split my job between three people. That's <laughs> how hard I work. That's how indispensable I made myself to that company. That's great. Yeah, I guess I'm pretty fortunate and grateful that I had the opportunity of passing the hat at the Renaissance Festival asking audiences for money, literally from the time I was 12, 13 years old, yeah. because that just got me accustomed to that, um, which is a difficult thing for anyone to do, much less a young kid. But I guess another approach would be not to see rejection as rejection personally. Like if you ask for something and the answer is no, that's just more information, like more information about like, okay, well, that was out of alignment and maybe there's something else, or maybe this isn't the right place for you. But if you don't, if you're just going to like be in a job and dissatisfied with what you're making and then maybe looking for another job, but not asking for what you really feel you deserve, and then ultimately you leave, then your employer is going to be disappointed that you never even expressed your disappointment. Yes. Like if they, they never had the opportunity to pay you what you wanted because they didn't know what you wanted. And so just keep the communication lines open and see it as an exchange of information, not this, not this big risk that you're taking. Exactly. And again, you, it's, you have to have earned it. You can't just ask, you know, you don't show up for your first day of work and say, Hey, can I leave early? Like what? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So last week we've talked about being at Universal Studios, California. This week, I was at a right really close to Universal, Florida, staying in a hotel that's one of the Universal hotels. It's the Lowe's Sapphire, right there, spring break week. It was loaded with families, and I just it had a, had a great time being down there. In fact, my client took their um, all of their people to Universal the night that I spoke. Oh. I came home, so I didn't get to go there, but I thought, how cool would that have been 
back to back to do two universals, yeah. like literally within just a couple of weeks of each other. But um, it was a very fun experience. And I'd been reading Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. It was one of the free books that's available through the Audible app. And I love listening to books on tape. And I just said, yeah, I've never read Frankenstein. I'm going to check it out. So I was literally poolside, getting sun, swimming, but listening in my headset to Frankenstein, which was written in like 1816 by, speaking of like a 19-year-old girl with initiative, Mary Kelly was 19 when she wrote this book and 21 when it became published. Um, and it was literally like one of the first horror stories ever. Uh, it, it was amazing. It was really cool. So I would say at the climactic moment when all this is coming to a head, I'm literally sitting outside with all these people swimming and playing with their kids. It was kind of crazy. <laughs> Yeah, Mary but, Shelley. Mary Shelley. Yeah. You read that book, right, Max? I did. Eddie, did you? Um, I did not, actually. Oh, I, I You would love it. I know. The, I was going to for uh, AP Lit. Yeah. I was deciding between that and A Clockwork Orange, and I had just read Dracula, so I kind of wanted a break from... Horror. Uh, Horror. Just that, like, older style of writing. Right. Where you really have to focus. Yeah, even, you have to wrap your mind around the language a little bit. Yeah, because even they though, wrote differently back then. If you've read A Clockwork Orange, half of the words in there are completely made up. So <laughs> it was yeah. a different kind of challenge. That's just so much more disturbing, I think. True. A Clockwork Orange. Oh yeah. This was. Oh yeah. This was really tasteful. What did you think, Maggie? <laughs> Frank yeah, so I read it tasteful. pretty early on in high school. I think I was surprised. Not surprised. It's just I feel like everyone's heard the story of Frankenstein so much, but the actual original story is actually pretty different. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was, that was interesting. And I don't remember everything about the book, but I remember the um, emotional aspect kind of, of just the emphasis on like, being unloved as a monster and like being like very much like outcasted for being different and like not even given like a chance and stuff like that um and i remember that being really interesting to me mm. that, that, that is frankenstein true frankenstein is the doctor what what do they call they just call they him just the monster called him right monster, the, the monster yeah. okay or the wretch like oh. yeah like, like like he was um so hideous that he, I mean, what's interesting about the novel is that Frankenstein in the movie, it's like the, the climax of the movie is when they create the monster in the book, the, 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 the creation of the monster happens early, happens in like the first 20% of the book. And then he kind of like escapes and goes away. And then I don't want to like spoiler alert it, no, but I'm gonna listen to it next. Yeah. And the, and the narration's great. So anyway, so I finished that book while I was down there and I did this great speech in Orlando. I shot a weekly video yesterday. I did my speech yesterday. And this company is Tropical Smoothie Cafe, which is a great company, great restaurant, Tropical Smoothies. They had this product show where they were testing out new potential flavors and I got to try all that. That's um, so fun. And then because it's a, lot, a young company, there were several people within the group who knew you, Maggie, and knew me from TikTok. And at one point I even got recognized in a target cause I went there to get a hard drive. And so a lot of people were like stopping me and talking to me and talking about TikTok and asking, when are you going to do another push in the pool video? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I told them we wimped out. Like when I was in LA, we, it was a little cold and we decided against it. Yeah. Uh, well, it'll be soon. Next next trip when we see each other for sure. But I want to give a big shout out to Caitlin from Target who saw me coming in to get my hard drive and stop me and talk. We talked for a second. And especially Jess, um, who was in my audience and went through the whole speech. And she came up afterward and said, a lot of people here don't know this, but I know you from TikTok. I listened to the podcast. So Jess, Yay. great to uh, have you in the audience. And thank hey, you so Jess. much for giving us the encouragement and validation uh, to keep going with what we're doing here. <laughs> nice. Well, this has been so fun, but I do need to get to Apple to have them fix my phone, hopefully. Get your phone fixed, girl. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And you also need to figure out how to get there because you don't have a GPS at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you um, have to map. navigate <laughs> more normally. 
That'll be we good. Used to, we used to get a piece of paper and write down directions and then maybe draw a map, but write down right and left and all I think that. that's what I'm going to do. For your birthday, I, Maggie, I I'm going to get you a Rand McNally Road Atlas <laughs> with you all know, 50 okay. states and you can that's, drive that's across okay. the country. Personally, but no, I appreciate great. the thought. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for listening. It means the world to us, especially like those interactions that my dad was talking about like people coming up and saying I listen to the podcast like this is such a personal side of us that the fact that you guys are entertained by it and enjoy it just means so much to us so thank you guys so much for listening and it's growing every week and we have more to share and Eddie has some words for us too I just uh wanted to say goodbye for now <laughs> Stop, that's thank sad. you guys no. <laughs> it's been great to be on the other side of this and to be you know part of the the group um the recording yeah. The, yeah the recording but um yeah i will i'll still be around i'll still be editing um yeah, streaming which... and stuff and um I'll, I'll definitely be coming back and yeah yeah you'll come back with regular and eddie even though you're not necessarily in the studio and on the podcast you recognize you're still in the family so that's <laughs> that is true yes right. you're still that's part of the changing. family not changing ever so that's good. <laughs> yeah. So all that to say until next time. And we're glad you're in the family. Like Maggie said, you know, we, we really consider you an extension of our, of our family. And that's why when you ask, ask questions on wholesomechaos.com, we read every one of them and we, we give them our deep thoughts and we hope truly that they help you in your life because that's the deal here. We talk about real life and real time in a real way to help each other and to help you. So be sure to follow, like, subscribe, share, and we will see you again soon. Love you, Maggie. Love you, Dad. Love you, Eddie. Love you, too. Love you, babe. Love you, baby. And love we... you, guys. Take care. <laughs> yeah, we see, all love you. See Eddie on Twitch. Take care. <laughs> we'll Travel you, safe. Eddie. Bye. 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 Mags and Dads. Wholesome chaos. Mags and Dads. So Maggie, did you play pickleball in the dress? No, no, I did not. I did the same thing, Maggie. Um, I was, I had been in a murder mystery the night before, like on a Friday night, and I had, I was a doll. I was like a Christmas toy doll, and it was this bright lime green dress with a big tutu, and it was actually really pretty. But um, so on Saturday night, I had a date to go to this film production party and um so i put on that dress and my date came to pick me up and i opened the door and i just like smiled and and he's like well all right let's go and he was totally down with me going to the party dressed like a doll it was so sweet but then i went and changed into a really lame dress that i had instead (laughs) do you still have the doll dress no, it was a rental. I had to give it back. It was a professional costume. Do you have a picture in I it? I do have a picture. <laughs> Is it going to show up in the podcast? Am I? <laughs>